The Empire is the largest and most powerful realm in the Old World. Founded by the warrior god Sigmar, it is built up on city-states and provinces that are bound together under the rule of the Emperor. However, it faces dire circumstances. It is a realm in constant turmoil, beset by all sides by the ferocious and the unholy, and to survive, the Empire is constantly at war. I am Karl Franz and I was born into this world, just like you. A world of unceasing war and endless terrors, but with a nation of men at its heart, a bastion of hope and courage. The Empire. The Empire lies at the heart of the old world. Truly, it is a land of ever-present danger where death and war are never too far away. Yet despite the bloodshed, this great nation endures still. Its cities and military strongholds forming bulwarks against the sea of savagery. At the dawn of the Age of Iron, where men first learned the secrets of its forging from the dwarfs, the tribes of men were scattered and fearful of the orcs. In those days, the orcs did rampage far and wide across the land of the Old World. From far in the east they came, slaying mankind, wherever they went. In desperation, a great cry went up into the skies from wretched mankind. Who can deliver us? An heir was born to the chief of the Unburgeons, greatest of the tribes of men, and his birth was heralded by a twin-tailed comet. This was the Holy Sigma of which the sacred legends speak, a mighty warrior who would withstand a thousand orcs of his own. Orcs sunk back at his approach, and even dwarfs sung his saga. The Empire's very birth was forged in battle. The legendary warrior Sigmar Heldenhammer united the primitive tribes of humans in order to drive off the hordes of orcs and goblins in the terrible battle of Blackfire Pass, which was the culmination of Sigma's campaign to cleanse the lands of the Empire of Orcs and Goblins. Songs say that half of the greenskins of the World's Edge Mountains were slain that day. It is also said that there has never been a greater concentration of crows in all the world gathered to feast on the stinking and unburied corpses of the greenskins at Blackfire Pass. So many greenskins died on that battle that it would be over a thousand years before the orcs and goblins again raised such an army, even with their progenous reproduction rates. This battle saw the power of the greenskin races broken in the lands of men, and drove them into the Badlands, their current domain. After the Battle of Blackfriar Pass, the humans returned to their lands, but not to their old ways. All the tribal chiefs recognised that humanity was safer united than divided, and they knew that only one among them could truly make that unity a reality. Thus, at Reichdorf, one year after the Battle of Blackfriar Pass, Sigma was proclaimed the Emperor of Man before the assembled representatives of the human tribes and even dwarfs recognised him as a worthy ally. Before him knelt the tribal chiefs who swore brotherhood to each other and fealty to Emperor Sigma and the newborn empire of man. The moment marks the start of the imperial calendar and occurred in the year one. All the years of Sigmar's reign were in a time of peace and great interval growth for the empire. For the land and the unity he had created was greater than any one man, any one dynasty. It belonged to the people it had been made for and it would be guarded by their strength, existing eternally in their minds and souls. Fifty years after ascending to the throne, Sigmar announced his abdication to the assembled counts and the high priests of various cults. 
he put aside his crown and journeyed eastwards. Sigma offered one final goodbye to the people he so loved and thus turned towards his destiny to take his rightful place in the everlasting company of the gods. The time of Sigma passed and he became a legend, the heroic forebearer of his people. Temples and shrines were built to his memory and within a generation he was worshipped as a god. The Elector Counts, who are originally the tribal chieftains that aided Sigma in his many wars against the Greenskins, are their rulers of their own provinces. They forged their alliances, maintain their militaries and run their governments, each facing unique challenges and enemies. However, their strength together has always been the source of their greatest victories. In this episode, we are going to visit some places of interest within the vast lands of the Empire. First, we have Altdorf in Reichland, the capital of the Empire, the richest and most powerful province whose elector, Karl Franz, is also the current emperor. Altdorf is home to the colleges of magic and all manner of arts and sciences flourish and is second to none in its splendor. The city of Middenheim in Middenland is built upon a towering crag rising up of the Great Forest. It is an impregnable fortress and is the city of the White Wolf. In this place, during the end times, numerous armies fought in a cataclysmic battle that would decide the fate of the Warhammer world. The Drakwald Forest is a dense region that lies between Middenland and Nordland. Few roads penetrate far into the deep forest. So thick is the forest canopy that a traveller could walk for weeks without seeing the sun. In the darkest places are found the totems and encampments of the beastmen, other foul creatures and even forgotten secrets. twisted by the mutating powers of chaos. The beastmen hunger for violence, venturing forth from the darkest forest to kill and destroy in the name of their foul gods. Ostland, snowbound and windswept, marches with Kislev and is the bastion of the Empire against Orc and Chaos invasions alike. Their warriors are well accustomed to war and know little comfort in their great fortresses. Nuln is the Empire's second largest city and it sits at the heart of the Old World's southern trade routes. Here lies the Imperial Artillery School and it trains men in the art of black powder weaponry. The brave crews use their knowledge of gigantic war machines to provide supporting fire for the Imperial cavalry and infantry units. Lastly, there is a cursed land of Sylvania, the most infamous of the provinces. Travellers are warned to keep their distance from this cursed soil, its ruined castles and mansions. It was here that the dreaded vampire counts rose hundreds of years ago. These aristocrats of the night sent their hordes of zombies and skeletons to ravage the lands between the sea and the world's edge mountains.
Only after centuries of war, when they finally defeated the Battle of Hell Fen with the combined forces of men and dwarf. The armies of the Empire are professional, well disciplined and led by some of the finest generals in history. Facing attacks from every border, the soldiers defend humanity against countless invaders. The backbone of the Empire's diverse army is in its regiments of well-drilled infantry. Serried ranks of disciplined state troops fighting shoulder to shoulder to defend the Empire. Common men with their own ambitions and fears, but willing to give their lives for their homes their loved ones and their faith. Pistolio regiments comprise young nobles eager to fight for their emperor but who are not yet experienced enough to join the Reichsguard. They are known for their recklessness and hunger for victory. Empire wizards hone their arts in the College of Magic. They are able to harness the power of the gods to cast deadly spells across the battlefield. Armoured knights, warrior priests, black power artillery and courageous heroes riding atop Imperial Griffons support the army of the Empire. With an unending chain of constant warfare, the armies of the Empire are brimmed with grizzled veterans of many campaigns, each one led by an even greater amount of strength, valour and heroic leaderships. In the Imperial year 2302, when the Empire was in the middle of a civil war, the largest chaos incursion since ancient times erupted, threatening to conquer the Old World. Led by the warlord Azavar Kol, the Chaos Horde swept over Kislev. Magnus, a noble of the Empire, travelled across the lands, delivering great speeches, condemning the invaders and restating the Empire's duty to oppose the evil surging from the north. Uniting the people under a common cause, he marched north, gathering more and more warriors with each place he visited. Magnus assembled the largest army in Imperial history, splitting it between infantry and cavalry. Flagellants marched next to the mercenaries and state troops of all the Elector Counts. Hedge wizards advanced alongside ordinary citizens who hated chaos. The force marched north to Kislev to meet the Chaos Legions, who were opposed only by the remnants of the Kislevite armies and the small dwarf force. What followed was a fierce battle. At the Battle of Four Gates, Magnus and his allies vanquished Kull and his horde. After the Great War, Magnus the Pious, as he posthumously became known, was elected Emperor and re-established Imperial government. Despite surviving one of the greatest threats the Empire of Man has ever faced, uncountable threats still prey upon this land of men to this day. Through the Empire has not always been united according to Sigma's vision and has even suffered long periods of internal strife, it has always stood strong against those forces that would threaten its survival, especially if under the leadership of a capable emperor. 
Karl Franz was elected to the imperial title in 2502 IC. He is acclaimed as a patron of the arts and science, as a military innovator and as a valiant general. The emperor frequently takes his personal command of his troops, wielding Gal Maraz, the fabled magical warhammer used by Sigma himself. He rides atop Deathclaw, his griff on mount for many years. His powerful bond exists between beast and master, one forged in countless battles and many adventures. Thanks to his tireless efforts and on behalf of its people, the Empire has flourished during his reign like never before. The Imperial Engineer School in Altdorf has grown, the Colleges of Magic have thrived and his armies have marched from victory to victory. Now the year is 2522 and it is the reign of Emperor Karl Franz. The Empire has rebuilt and grown powerful, but evil still lurks in the depths of the land. Mutant monsters prowl in its dark forests, malevolent ratmen plot beneath its cities, and the living dead rise from their graveyards. Old enemies look enviously across its borders, and a threat of invasion from greenskins and chaos-worshipping barbarians is an ever-present danger. Whatever foul form this enemy takes, and from whichever direction the strike comes, the doom of the realm seemingly draws near. The armies of the Empire must hold the line against these unrelenting dangers. They must not waver and cannot fail, for if the Empire falls, the civilized world will be drowned in a tide of blood and death. Only through the actions of its valiant heroes has it repelled the numerous invasions brought against it. Only through the faith and the bold deeds of men, our beloved Empire endures. Thank you for watching. On this channel, we're putting together fan-made cinematic episodes featuring historical and fantasy battles based on the settings from the Total War series and, of course, good old World of Warhammer. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the notification button to be the first to watch the next battle.